Hey guys, it's Rebecca from Mama Bear Custom Rees and welcome to my channel, Mama Bear Custom Rees, where I make rees and all things home decor and I show you how I do it all. So I have been getting a lot of feedback from you guys that you guys really like the six inch deco mesh, but you hate all of the fraying. So I've come up with a way where we can use our six inch deco mesh without any scissors. And so that reduces, almost eliminates all of that frame. That's right, <laughs> it sounds too good to be true, I know. But stay with me till the end, I promise you, it's true. Before we get started, if you have not hit the subscribe button, please do so and leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, let me know where you're watching me from. I am in Texas. I'm always curious where my fellow crafters are across the country or the world. All right, guys. So we're gonna use six of our six inch deco mesh Dollar Tree rolls. I'm gonna use pink for this project because I have a really cute pink sign that I wanna use. And I'm gonna use a 14 inch wreath base. Now this 14 inch wreath base has four wires, one, two, three, four, and it has six sections, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to use one deco mesh per section. Now, if you have a wreath that's a little bit bigger, it's okay, just get some more deco mesh. If your wreath's a little bit smaller, you're just gonna use a little bit less deco mesh. It does not have to be exact. We can alter this recipe uh, any way to fit what you have or what you're trying to do. Okay, so our wreath base, if you see the top part of this, I'm, I'm gonna call this the top, it curves up like a butt cake, right? So that's the top. If I flip that over, it's concave, that's the bottom. We are gonna start at the bottom. So we're gonna have our wreath um, the downside, the concave side facing up, we're gonna get a Chanel stem and we are going to fold it in half and make a V, see that? Now, you guys see the four bars and there's crossbars all around. So I'm going to put my Chanel stems right on the between the first bar and this crossbar and I'm going to use that to secure my Chanel stem in there. So remember this is whoops this is concave up. I'm going to take the Chanel stem through the crossbar through the bars the first bar and the crossbar and then I'm going to tie it to secure it and so the little legs will be up like this. This is the top. So if you're looking at it from the top, I have a little um, A. If you flip it up, there's a V. So that's how we're going to start. We're gonna get our very noisy plastic off of our deco mesh roll. Just kind of roll out our deco mesh. And we're going to just pinch a little bit here, about yay much of the end. And we're going to put it right in the middle of our V and then tie it twice. We're not gonna keep tying it because we're gonna use it again, okay? So this is what we have so far. This is the bird's eye view, okay? Now let's take our deco mesh, let's push it through Bars, remember we have bar one, two, three, four. We're gonna push it between bars one and two. So there's three spaces. The very first space on the inner part of our wreath base, we're gonna push our deco mesh right through there. Don't be shy, just push it in. <laughs> and we're gonna grab our hand, okay? And I'm just gonna leave a little bit outside of my hand, okay? So a little bit extending from my hand. That's gonna be the size of my poof. So we're gonna hold that. Now we're gonna get the remaining deco mesh that's on our roll, and we're gonna push that through bars two and three, so in our second space. So that's gonna look like 
this, push it out, and then we're going to, again, grab it by our with our fist, and we're gonna leave about the same amount of our deco mesh on this side of our fist. Now, we're gonna do the same thing between bars three and four, which would be our third space. So, and if it gets twisted, that your deco mesh, don't worry, it's fine. It's absolutely fine, it doesn't matter. It actually helps it stick. The deco mesh will stick to each other and you'll see what I mean in a bit. So we'll put our deco mesh through that bar and measure the amount that we want on the other side of our fist. So now we have all three. Now we can twist it a little bit and we're gonna go right through bars one and two, right next to it and do the same exact thing. So let's push our deco mesh through the mat, through the bars, in between the bars and measure it so that it's the same on the other side of my hand, then I'm gonna push through the second and third bar and push it through, hold it with my fist so that the poof is about the same size as the poofs before that. And then go through bars three and four and again, hold it with our fist and we have this. And we're gonna keep doing this until we run out of mesh. So we're getting close to the end. I have this much left of a tail. So I am going to get another Chanel stem, make it a V, tie it between, let's see if you can see it, tying between the first bar again and this next crossbar. And we're gonna tie it just as we did our very first Chanel stem. So we tie it, secure it, and then we're going to get our tail. I'll show you, this is concave side up. We're gonna get our tail, tie it inside, and then we're going to secure our Chanel stem to tighten it up. But we're only gonna do it once or twice because we're gonna use it again. So we can poof this out and our poofs are kind of, you know, cause we were squeezing them with our fist. They're just all kind of cattywampus and stuck together inside, they're skinny. So let's fluff them out, just open up our poofs so that we can have them look full. Now I'm doing this right now so I can show you how full it looks. But if I were not doing a tutorial on this, I would wait until the very end to poof them out because these poofs are gonna get in the way of me putting the deco mesh in the other rolls. I'm sorry, in the other sections. So it's gonna be a little annoying to have these open. But I want you guys just to see how full one little section can be. Look at that, that's one section. No scissors, no fraying, one section. <laughs> okay, so on the back side, we have our first Chanel stem and our second Chanel stem. So now we're going to take our second roll of deco mesh roll it out and remember i told you not to tie your chanel stem so tightly it's because we're going to keep opening them so now we're going to open the last one that we just tightened on and we're going to get our deco mesh and just pinch a little bit of the end here so that we can secure that and maybe get the tail of the last one just kind of put it back here so it's not showing so much and now we're going to tie and secure it. Now we can secure it to a couple times. And if you want to cut it now, you can cut the legs of the Chanel stem now or wait till the end. I usually wait until the end. So this is what our wreath base looks like. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same exact thing that we just did in our last section. We're gonna 
push our deco mesh through and this is what i'm saying you might want to wait till the end to poof out everything because now this big old poof these poofy poofs are in the way trying to um get our deco mesh on this side okay so make a fist first and second bar then we go through our second space which is between bars two and three get that and then we're going to push our deco mesh between bars three and four which is our third space hold on to our fist hold on with our fists and then go back down between bars one and two and we're going to do it once again all the way to the end of our section to the end of our deco mesh roll and then we will start on section three, four, five, and six. And I'll get, come back once we're done. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to show you the difference. I have not unpoofed or poofed these. You see how small this looks compared to the poofs around it? So that's the difference <laughs> in poofing. So we are going to poof out our, our poofs, just make them bigger so that we get this beautiful volume on our wreath base. No one's gonna believe that you just use six inch deco mesh to make all this volume. And I will also say an added benefit of this method is you get a workout on your arms. My arms are sore <laughs> from doing my poofs. Now I've been doing them. I did not stop. I just went, I have not taken a break I, from when I started this video. So I have just been making poofs this whole time. And let me tell you, my arms feel a little burn. So it's also a fitness activity. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna finish unpoofing all these or poofing them. So I'll be right back. Now, let's flip this baby upside down. And we have these Medusa wires. Um, and we're not gonna add anything down here anymore. So get wire cutters, invest in some. You can get some, um, not so expensive i'm going to link some um in the description box that you can buy um reason being these wires and the chanel stems will ruin your scissors and i cannot stress this enough i have i don't know <laughs> a deep conviction in my heart about scissors have different scissors have scissors for your mesh for you know, just different materials of plastic that you rip off the plastic and then have a set of scissors just for your ribbon. Trust me on this, your ribbon, the edges will cut frayed and sideways and zigzagged on scissors that are used to cut other things. So you'll see me with a bunch of scissors because I have a set of scissors just for my ribbon and they don't have to be expensive or you know, fabric scissors, just a set of scissors that you only use for ribbon to keep them sharp. So I use my wire cutters to cut anything that has a wire in it, um, other than wired ribbon, obviously. So see how that is just smooth? It's not gonna scratch a door. Um, it's nice and smooth. Okay. Look how beautiful and full the space came out. I love it. Okay, I found this cute little sign in my Easter stash. So we're gonna use this sign and we're gonna put this sign on our wreath about right here. This is gonna be so cute, you guys. So you guys have already seen the end product. So I guess me warning you how cute it is. <laughs> it's kind of pointless, but I haven't seen my end product yet. so. I'm excited because I'm like, oh, I just got an idea. Oh, I just got an idea. So literally my idea for this wreath has changed about six times since I started making this wreath. 
<laughs> so I get super excited with each change. All right, so we're gonna put this sign on our wreath. And, and to do that, we're gonna use our cable mount. So at the time that I'm recording this, I don't know if I have links to where you can buy these so you know um, where I'm getting it, that way you don't have to be looking for it, make it easier for you. Um, so hopefully the link is running by the time this video airs. If not, just check back a little later. <laughs> it should be in the description. Um, but these are cable mounts, okay? These make it so much easier to put a sign on your wreath instead of waiting for your hot glue gun, which I just turned on, instead of waiting for your hot glue gun and using Chanel and all that. And you can do that. This is just a lot quicker. And honestly, it saves you hot glue, which is more expensive, I think, than the cable mounts themselves. So, okay. I'm thinking of putting our sign right about here. So I am going to pull the impossible to peel. Oh, it's gonna prove me wrong this time impossible to peel but right now it works kind of like your car right does it make the noise until you wait it makes the noise until you get to the mechanics right so these are impossible to peel until I make this video so we're gonna take our um, cable mount and we're just gonna put it close to where we're gonna tie it to our wire so we're actually gonna tie our sign directly to the metal on our wreath base See, this one was easy too. <laughs> I just can't peel things, to be honest with you. Everyone else seems to be able to do it easily. I can't peel things and I'm bad at technology. Okay. So I have put my two, um, I can actually put one more here at the bottom. Let me put one more. I put one on each side and I'm also going to put one on this bottom side because I don't want our wreath just kind of like hanging like this. And we're gonna get our trusty Chanel stems and we're gonna go through our cable mount. Look how easy that is. Through our cable mount and then we're gonna just tie it. And I'm gonna put a Chanel stem on all of my cable mounts. And this is what we're going to use to tie our sign to our wreath base. So we're actually gonna dig through some mesh <laughs> to find the wires. So I want my sign about yay. So I am going to simply take my deco mesh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take my Chanel stem and poke through my deco mesh. It would be really hard to poke the deco mesh through the Chanel. Um, and then feel free to go through your, your deco mesh, that's fine. You don't have to like push it out of the way and struggle with it. You could poke right through it if you like. I'm not patient. <laughs> and then just make sure that your um, Chanel stems are separated on the bars. What I mean is, so I'm going to turn it around. I have, these are my wires. I have one around the second wire and one around the third wire. That way it's a little bit tighter, okay? Not tighter, but that way it has a more secure hold, okay? Now, I've told you in other videos, don't push your sign so hard against the mesh. Um, when you do that, you're squishing your deco mesh and it just looks squished, you know, like um, your pants from before Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving, <laughs> if you eat at our house anyway. So you wanna make sure that it's tight enough where it won't fall off or droop but not too tight where it squishes your mesh. So I usually just turn it around and then I feel it, okay, it's, it's secure. And then I tie it. And then I'll just tie it once or twice because I may come back and loosen it up if I did it too tight. But see, that's a good fit. It's not squishing anything. 
So it just looks like it's on top. It doesn't look like it's being forced in there, okay? So we're gonna do this other corner of our sign. And again, just um, doesn't have to be the second and third um, wires, just as long as they're two separate so wires. So this is good, see? It's secure, it's not squished, I like it. Okay, so I saw this adorable little bunny let's cut off his tag so this little bunny has a weight at the bottom and that weighs your reeds down and that could you know be too heavy on your door so i could feel a little in mean, a little bag of sand or rocks there and that's what they use to um you know so they don't flip over so we're going to cut here on the side Make a little incision. We are going to perform surgery. <laughs> We're gonna cut a little bit here, just enough to be able our bag out. It's like a lobotomy, <laughs> but on the opposite end. So that's what's inside. This is basically just rocks. Throw those away. And that was what was weighing down our bunny. Our bunny has a hole back here. So let's go ahead and suture up our bunny. We're going to get some floral wire. And then we're just gonna kind of stitch him up. Just uh, squeeze it and sew him back together again. You can also just take a Chanel stem and one Chanel stem should be enough to close him up. But I'm gonna go extra. <laughs> and actually stitch him with wire. Cause our poor bunny's gonna make our wreath look so cute. So I'm gonna take care of our bunny. So I just did a couple stitches and I'm gonna tie our floral stem and cut off the rest. And just tuck that in and he is fixed. <laughs> now that we've performed our surgery on our bunny, I am going to get a Chanel stem and I'm just gonna get his little skin like this and poke. Okay guys, I my phone ran out of storage again. <laughs> so um, what I basically did um, that was not recorded, I didn't know, sorry about that, was I just tied some Chanel stems to the back of our bunny. And this is very, it's just very flimsy cloth, so you can just poke your Chanel stem through there, okay? So we're gonna tie that, and that's what we're gonna use to tie to our wreath. And I want our little bunny about right here. So I'm just gonna do the same thing where I want him. I am going to get my Chanel stems and poke through the mesh, push it to the side or poke it through. Now we're gonna tie this side. So it's our little bunny. Okay, now I thought it would be cute for our bunny to be holding an egg. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So, in order to do that, let's place our egg where we want it. I think I want it right there. And I'm basically just gonna put glue on the back of our egg and on our bunny where I want the egg. Glue it on. Keep it on there for a little while so that it adheres. And then I want to glue the little bunny's hands to the bunny egg. To the egg, I mean, to the Easter egg. So we're going to put our bunny hand right here. We're gonna glue that. 
just gluing that there. And then we're gonna glue our other hand. to our egg. We're just gonna hold that. Till it dries. How stinking cute. Okay, now I say we put a bow right here. So I have various assortments of bow of a ribbon here. I haven't quite decided, but I thought this would be really colorful. I like this ribbon. Let me use my regular cutting ribbon, not me, my regular cutting scissors, not my ribbon scissors. Uh, this was cute because I want different colors on it even though this is pink and the egg is pink we want the pink to kind of pop out more but I do want to incorporate Easter colors so I do want to make it colorful just a little bit less muted than the pink so this ribbon has a variety of colors okay on it. so we're gonna need a zip tie and we're gonna need our trusty Chanel stem let's put that aside I like this ribbon. I don't really want this ribbon to have long, I mean this bow to have long tails on this wreath or tail. I did it about nine inches and it's up to you how long you want it. Then I did at about, um, what I say? Yeah, about 11 inches. Then we're gonna pinch it. So this is what it looks like, pinch it. Now we're gonna take our bow, our ribbon and we're gonna go from the back because it's 11, here's where it's pinched. So now the rest of the ribbon is in the back. We're gonna bring that forward so that we can make a loop. Now, I don't measure all of my loops. I'm a student of chaos, I think. <laughs> so we're going to actually just measure, I just measure with my fingers. Is it the same length? Okay, and that's a bow. I mean, that's a, yeah, that is a bow. Now, I am going to actually make it four um, loops. So this would have been our tail. If you wanna just do it, let me do it like this. This would have been our tail. If you wanna just leave it like this. I'm gonna add two more loops. So I'm going to get our tail, and now I'm gonna go from forward to back and just make a loop there. And again, measure it against the other loops so they're about the same size. It's about the same. Now I'm going to take our ribbon, now is here in the back. I'm gonna take it from the back to the front and measure that loop. That's well, really long. All right, that's about the same length. Okay, so that's what we have so far. We can keep going if you wanna keep adding loops. I think I'm done. I am now going to take my ribbon scissors and I am going to cut the bottom. Now, when I'm doing these not on video, I don't cut the tails until the very end. I just have, I'm standing up and I just have rolls on the floor <laughs> and I cut it at the end. Okay, so that's so far our first few bows. Now I'm gonna take this pretty, pretty, look how cute this ribbon is. I'm gonna take this ribbon and I'm going to get the tail. And again, we don't want it that long, our tails. So now I'm just gonna pinch where I want it. Make a loop. And this loop's gonna be a little bit smaller than the last loop. Why? Because I wanna see the ribbon behind it. I don't wanna overpower it. Okay, so we're gonna make that loop just a tad bit smaller. Can you see that? You can see the design on the back. Okay, I'm gonna bring that ribbon 
the extra ribbon from the back to the front and let's measure our loops both equal this is why i throw mine on the floor and cute okay so One of two things. If this does not bother you, you can leave it like this. And what I mean is, you see how one side is going this way and the other side is going up? If that doesn't bother you, or if your ribbon does not have designs like this, you can just keep going. If it bothers you, or if your ribbon has designs and it bothers you, um, don't fast forward, watch what I'm gonna do because I'm gonna show you a trick. <laughs> I don't like this. So what I'm going to do is I have my first loop. I'm going to get my ribbon scissors. I can't stress this enough, y'all. <laughs> and I'm going to cut very close to where my fingers are. I'm gonna cut my ribbon. Just cut it. You don't want it. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take said ribbon and I want my tail design to both be going down. So I'm now going to put the tail with the design that I want, the direction that I want, facing down. I'm going to pinch it. I'm going to make my loop. Pinch it again. I'm going to put it in between my index finger and my thumb. It's getting tricky y'all this is advanced but i wanted to show you you guys can practice and i'll maybe make a video how to do this ribbon i do have a video um in my playlist on how to make a bow by hand um you could check that out if you need to practice making bows by hand and um let me know in the comments if you want me to show you in detail slower how to do these ribbons so that your tails are all facing the same way if i have enough people that want to do it i'll um i'll make that tutorial for y'all okay so Let's tie our, let's make our tail, I mean our loops the same size. I don't like to take this long on a um, bow tutorial because some people know how to make bows, some people use bow makers, so not everyone needs help with their bows. Okay, so I am going to cut, you see this is the ribbon facing down. So I'm gonna lift that up and I'm gonna cut this bottom ribbon because that is the opposite side that I want it to be. We don't want okay. that. So that's our bow. We're gonna get our Chanel stem, put it in the back. Don't lose grip of your thumb. I know this is advanced bow making, so you don't need to get this fancy. And this is only if your bows have writing on them. You don't need to worry about this if your bows do not, if your ribbon does not. So now we're going to take our Chanel stem and tie our bow together. Okay. And when you do that, just make sure, you know, your ribbon isn't all cattywampus or on the inside. Let's just straighten out our, um, our ribbon. We are going to tie our ribbon. We're gonna take our wire cutters to cut the plastic, not our ribbon scissors. <laughs> we are going to tie our bow to our reef base, just like we did our sign, just like we did our bunny. Okay, flip this around. So this is what our wreath looks like thus far. So we're gonna put this aside and now we are going to use spaghetti. <laughs> it's not spaghetti, it's deco mesh tubing. 
and we are gonna make little bows out of this. First things we're gonna do is we're gonna take a Chanel stem. We're gonna fold it in half like so. We're going to cut that. Then we're gonna fold it in half again, and that's a V. Okay, we're gonna find an end to our mesh here. So I have yellow, green, and blue. So we're gonna take about three inches, pinch. Then we're gonna measure about 10 inches, pinch, join together. This is essentially how you make a bow. Um, measure another 10 inches pinch each side, join our pinches, and then we can just measure the length of this one, which should be about three inches. Now, I normally don't measure. I'm only measuring so that it makes it easier for you. Once you get the hang of doing this, you're not gonna be measuring. You're gonna be like, I don't have time for this. I need to get with my crafting. <laughs> so, um, do it again, three inches pinch, 10 inches, pinch, join our pinches, zero inches to 10 inches, pinch, join our pinches, attach it to the next one and just cut the ends similar length to the other one. And that's our little deco mesh tubing bow. Let's take our V Chanel stem right in the middle and then we're just gonna tighten that, okay? And we have this cute little thing. So I've already went ahead and done a few of them and I'm just going to mix the yellow with the blue and just mix them all up and I'm gonna make a couple of them. All right, guys, so I put you on bird's eye view so you can get a better look at what I'm doing. So I made all of these little deco mesh bow. Deco mesh tubing bows, <laughs> that's a mouthful. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach them all around my wreath. So I'm gonna start about right here. And I am basically gonna do the same thing that we've been doing to attach everything is just go around our wires tighten it and tighten it from the back and there you go okay so I'm gonna do that all the way around and just kind of space them out like this and attach them I don't want them too close to where they're touching I want a little bit of space between them so I think that's good right there. I'm just going to open that up. And I'm tying it to wire four and wire three. Now I'm going to tie over here and I'm just alternating the colors. So I'm going to go all the way around and I'll see you in just a sec. Let's dovetail our tails. Edge, we're going to cut towards our crease. Okay. Dovetail that, fold it, okay, and cut towards our crease. All right. So this is our wreath. I love it. It is so cute. Look at it. Oh, I love it. It's so colorful. It's so original. I love it. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and check me out on all of my other social media. I am on everything. <laughs> Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, my Etsy shop. I'm everywhere. Mama Bear Custom Reads. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next tutorial. Bye.